so today I'm going to be sharing with you how I used Microsoft PowerPoint to make a classroom blueprint for how I want my classroom to be set up, or at least how I think I want it to be set up. This is a super simple way to lay out your classroom before you actually start moving furniture around so that you can avoid pushing and pulling shelves and heavy furniture over and over again until you get it right. This way you can just visualize it first and then move it after you are pretty certain that this is how you're going to want it to be. Alright, so starting with just a plain blank slide with no text boxes or anything on it, I am adding the slide to my PowerPoint and then I'm going up to the page setup so you go under file page setup and we're going to change the dimensions of the classroom. I measured my classroom first and figured out that my classroom is 27 inches by 27 inches so it's a big square. However, I ended up making the slide 30 by 30 because the 27 by 27 just goes from bookshelf to bookshelf, which is how my classroom is set up. There's bookshelves all along the sides, so it doesn't include the actual like width of the shelving along the perimeter, if that makes sense. So I made mine 30 by 30, and then I am going to add a square shape in order to show the actual like flooring that I have. So in order to do that, I'm going to insert shapes, and then I'm choosing the square, and then I'm just going to click and drag to make it any dimensions right now and then I'm going to fix those dimensions to be exactly what I need which is 27 by 27 up here under the shape format and I'm going to click the width and the height to make a 27 by 27 square. So now I'm just taking my square and clicking and dragging it to center it. You get those cr the grid lines, the cross, um, that shows that it is centered. So once I have completely centered my square, I'm actually going to go ahead and change the color. This is not like a crucial step, but I don't love the blue. So I'm going to go ahead into Format Pane and click the drop down arrow for the fill. And I'm going to click the little color box, the paint can, and choose a different color. I'm just going with gray because it's a little bit lighter on the eyes. And then I'm changing the outline because you'll notice that it is still blue and I'm going to click that drop down arrow for the line and just make it the same color so that it all matches. So now after I have my square, I'm going to go ahead and start adding the things along the edges. So like my shelving, my air conditioner, my doors, all of that stuff, I'm putting on the perimeter that's like outside of the square because that's not included in my dimensions that I measured. And I'm going to just go ahead and add these along the sides so that I have all of those things out of the way. In order to do this, I'm going back into insert and grabbing another shape. We're once again using the square and I'm going to just kind of click and drag and make a rectangle along the side. I'm just going to make one large rectangle and then you'll see when I add the labels that I'm just going to kind of put them along the rectangle because everything is connected. It's just one long like piece of furniture, I guess, if you will. However, it's just broken up into cabinets, sink and some shelving units. And then here I am still under shape format and I'm just going ahead and entering the dimensions of that whole like wall built in shelves and sink and all that kind of stuff. I'm making sure that the dimensions are proportionate and that it lines up with the edge of my wall. Alright, so now to add some labels, I'm just going to insert and then text box and I'm just adding a little rectangle text box and I'm going and changing the font back under the home screen just because I like it to be a little bit cuter. So I'm changing my font and I'm making it bigger. Now keep in mind, you're going to see that my font is still very small even though I chose size 24. When you have a slide that is this big, it's supposed to be 30 by 30, it's going to make the font look really, really tiny because it's such a big slide even though it's just scaled down. So I ended up having to change my font to like size like 50 something um, just so that you could see it. But yeah, so you're going to want a bigger font, but I'm just adding a label and I'm going to turn it on its side and then drag it on over to my square. This is the tall cabinet label, so it's going down in the corner. And then I'm just going to continue to add labels that go up and down that built in. Now I'm just going to make this a lot easier on myself and just copy and paste a whole new text box. So I just highlighted the tall cabinet text box and copied and pasted it so that I could just make another text box right next to it. This way I'm using the same font, the same color, which you'll see I'm going to change from black to white in a second. But that's just how I'm labeling all up and down this built in. I'm just copying and pasting so that I don't have to go through and reformat the font size, the font color, the font every single time that I make a new text box. So here I'm actually going to go ahead and edit the color of the text in all of my text boxes. In order to edit multiple text boxes at once, I'm just pressing command on my keyboard and clicking all of the text boxes so that they're all highlighted. And then I just changed the color to white and it changed the color for all of my text boxes to white. So now we are finished with the built-ins on that side and we're going to move to the other side of the room. 
I'm going to start off by just copying and pasting that same shape that I have on the other side, that long rectangle, uh, because it's about the shape that I need for the other side. I'm going to place it in the right spot, so up in the corner is where it's going, and I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, and then I'm going to do the same thing to add labels for this side. Something else you can do if you want to split up the sections of built-ins like this is you can go under back to insert shapes and then they have lines you can use. So I just inserted a little line between the shelving and the air conditioner kind of to show where the shelving stopped and then there's just like a blank air conditioner space that can't be used. So I am just putting a line right there and then I went into the line color and just changed it to white so that you can see it because it comes out naturally blue. So I added a line and now I'm going to go ahead and add the doors. I have two doors in my classroom. The one I'm adding right now is like the front door that goes into the hallway and then I'm going to do the same thing add a rectangle and a text box that says door and then I'm going to put another one next to the air conditioner and that door leads to the outside of the school now since I have a second door and I want to copy the same shape and the same text box together, what I did was just highlight both of them. So once again I pushed command on my keyboard and then clicked the text box and the shape. And now I'm going up and I'm going to group them together. So I clicked the arrange drop down menu and I pushed the group button and now you can see that they both move together. They're no longer a separated text box and shape. So when I copy that, the whole thing gets copied, the shape and the text box together and I can just go ahead and copy that and then move the whole thing and put it down where the second door of my classroom is. Let's get started with some of the furniture now. So you'll see that I have this table down here in the corner that kind of resembles like a kidney table, a half circle table, one of those things. I have one of those in my classroom and I'm going to show you guys how I created it on PowerPoint. So first I'm starting off with another shape, it is another rectangle and I am just going to make it the width of the table that I measured in my room. So I'm estimating about 5 feet for the width and then what I'm going to do is then just kind of make the height um, however, however big I feel like it. I didn't really measure that to be honest but we're going to turn it on an angle and then I'm going to go back up and add another shape this time grabbing a circle and the circle I'm going to go ahead and place kind of like overlapping the rectangle so that it kind of creates that cutout. Now it is going to come out blue just like all the other shapes do so after I put it over where I want it on the table I'm just going to change the color to gray and also change the line to gray or push no um, line at all just so that it is a blank so you can't really tell it just creates that cutout so as I move it up over the rectangle it just makes a cutout and you can't tell that there's a circle anymore. So once again I'm going to take both of these shapes highlight them both and then go back up to the arrange and then group drop down menu put them together so that when I want to move the entire table it all moves together and it's not two separate shapes anymore all right so now we're going to add just some more furniture in the room I have a bunch of bookshelves some tables all of that good stuff basically the gist of it is I'm just going to continue to add rectangles make them the proportions and measurements that they are and then just add labels if I want to I even have these little like round stools that I'm going to use for my small group table so I'm just adding little circles and I'm going to color them the color of the stools that I have just so that it kind of stands out and that I know what those seats are. I'm going to do the same thing for the beanbag chairs and Big Joe chairs that I have in my classroom. I have a pink and a blue one that I'm kind of planning on putting in my library so I just labeled them Big Joe but once again I just took some circles and colored them the colors of the chairs. So you'll notice that I have this big colorful rug or puzzle piece mat on the floor. I'm going to show you guys how I got that into my blueprint as well. In Google I just typed in puzzle piece floor mat and then went to images and you get all these different pictures of floor mats that look just like the one that I have in my classroom. I tried to find the flattest one that like didn't look like it was much on an angle as I could. Um, this is the one I ended up coming up with and I basically just copied and pasted the image into the PowerPoint. It's as simple as that so you can literally Google any kind of carpet or anything that you can find that's like remotely close to what you're looking for. Google it, see what you can find and then just copy and paste it into your PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I had a little like white border around mine so I just kind of cropped that out because it was annoying me it's really not a big deal but that's what I did to get my rug it was super simple and easy but there's lots of other rugs you can find out there or if you can't find the rug even just inserting a shape with the same dimensions will also work as well 
so yeah that's basically all that I did to kind of create my little blueprint of my classroom it's super simple like I said very very easy and is very very helpful I can't wait to use this to set up my classroom especially because I'm not getting my furniture till middle of August or so so I'm gonna be kind of on a time crunch when I finally get it so this will be a really great tool to use so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys found this video helpful and I will talk to you in the next one bye